Hi, I'm Curtis and welcome to the show. Just another day at the park, right? Not just any park. This is the park at the Marin County Civic Center. Designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Beautiful complex. The lagoon, the park, and that beautiful building behind us. Check it out if you get a chance. If you're visiting from out of town or here in Marin, come take a look at this beautiful park. So what do we got for you in today's show? Sweet and sour chicken, my version. Now I want you to think about something. Once you know how to make this recipe, it's easy to convert to sweet and sour shrimp or fish. You can use pork, any other items you can make the sweet and sour. So try it out, all right? Also a blast from the past today, I'm gonna make a three item tomato soup. The tomatoes are from my garden from, I think it's last season, where I froze a lot of tomatoes and just made a quick, easy tomato soup. Also, there's a new section on the show today called uh, Fresh and Sweet, mm, where I pick an item that's in season and should be at its peak flavor. Today, Tuscan melons. So, why don't I send you back to my house in the kitchen to see those recipes whipped up while I spend some time here at the park. Peace, and remember, spread love. Happy cooking, y'all. My recipe, my version of sweet and sour chicken. Love this dish. Like everyone, during COVID, we couldn't go out to restaurants, okay? And sometimes you just get tired of delivery. So in addition to learning to, to record and edit videos, I started trying my hand at more Asian cuisine, Chinese, Japanese, even some Thai food. I've got uh, a pretty good with it, okay? Now this recipe, uh, I hope my buddy Ming Tsai, <laughs> one of my old Food Network partners is checking this out because I think this is a, I do a pretty good job with this one of, of fusing down home country mama's fried chicken with the wonderful Chinese Asian style of, of, of making sweet and sour. Uh, so the three steps, the first step is to get the chicken ready. So what I've done is slice the chicken breast and I like chicken breast for this recipe. You can use dark meat. There are thighs available, boneless thighs available in stores, even boneless drumsticks. They just cut the meat out, okay? Uh, what I've done is added but, uh, the chicken pieces, bite-sized pieces, into a container with buttermilk, salt, and pepper, just like I'm gonna do if I'm making mama's fried chicken. And marinate overnight if you have the time. Because remember, that helps to, to tenderize that bird, that, that yard bird as we call it down south. Then we'll make a batter, okay? The basis uh, flour, we're gonna add some cornstarch, some baking powder, and I'm gonna use the buttermilk to, as the liquid as opposed to water, okay? Again, confusion or fusion cooking. After that part is done, we're gonna fry that up, set it aside, let, it, let the oil drain out. Then we'll uh, cook our vegetables. Uh, sweet onion, love that. Pepper, red, green, and yellow bell peppers, and some pineapple, okay? After that's done, in our wok, we're going to make our sweet and sour sauce. My ingredients for sweet and sour are a little different. Some people use ketchup. I like tomato paste. Then a red berry. I've got a berry mixture here, raspberry works. Any strawberry, any, any of your favorite berry um, jam will work. Some brown sugar. Then we're gonna add um, the, the uh, rice wine vinegar, because I love rice wine. You can use white vinegar, any vinegar you like. And then we're gonna make a little slurry to help to thicken that sauce up, okay? Let's prep, let's fry, let's have fun in the kitchen. Spread love. All right, let's make our batter for our chicken, the flour. And one of my tricks is I love using bread flour. It's nice and smooth and fluffy. We're gonna add our corn uh, baking powder, this is right here, baking powder. Then our corn starch, those both go in. I decided not to add salt because, you know, it's been marinated in the salt and pepper overnight with the buttermilk. And now here's that buttermilk. I drained some of the buttermilk off and you, as you can see, some is, is still sitting in that. And if we need to add more buttermilk, we can take it from here or from our container and just stir it. And if it's not thin enough, you can add more buttermilk or water. We want a nice consistency here. Just take your time. I don't want it to be like uh, bread dough. I'm gonna add more buttermilk here. I want to be a little thinner. So just take your time here, whisk that in there, and try not to splash it up on your shirt. <laughs> there we go. Now we'll just add our chicken here. 
and it's ready to fry now or you can leave it in the fridge for a minute or two while you prep all the rest of your ingredients. Oh, that looks good right there. That's a nice consistency. So I'm just going to pour my chicken in there from right from the container. It's going to thin out a little bit because there's more moisture, but take your time. Don't worry. Never fear. Chef Curtis is here. There we go. Now, just mix that in there. Put your safety gloves on, your food handling gloves. This is ready to go to the hot oil, peanut oil or whatever you like to cook with. All right, let's get our vegetables ready. Vegetables next, starting with that beautiful sweet onion. Just love those. I think all we need is about half an onion. All right, let's speed it up to get through the prep. We're gonna start by dicing our onion and I want large pieces. Then we'll do our red pepper. Remove those seeds. Discard anything you're not going to use. And just take your time. I, I like big chunks with my vegetables here. The green pepper next. Let's go ahead and get ready to do our yellow pepper. Gonna slow it down a bit so you can see me um, get that pineapple ready to go. All right, let's prep our pineapple. I'm just gonna slice the crown off. Normally I'll rip it out. However, this time I like to slice it away, get a nice clean cut. You can root that pineapple crown. Gonna slice it in half, place half in the fridge for later. Then we'll just trim it up by removing the eyes, then slice it into nice chunks. And of course you have to taste a bit before you- Got oil is nice and hot. I just dropped a couple of bits of the batter in there to see how it would, uh, if the temperature was up. You see how that's just floating to the top? Now I've got a lot of fry tools and I can just scoop that right out so that we don't have to worry about that. Now, um, we talk a lot in the kitchen about safety, so turning the handles. Also have everything ready. I've got my chicken here on a wooden cutting board. And then once the chicken is done, I'll put on a wire rack so it will drain the fat off, okay? Drain the excess oil off. Um, I've got tongs to drop it in. Again, moms and dads, teach your little ones to um, you know, extend the hand over the, the hot oil and lay it in softly like that, you see? The oil's nice enough, and there's no danger there. Also, <laughs> for television, uh, you can see the food as opposed to my bald head blocking the shot. Now, I think in the past I've shared with you so many times how much mom did with a fork. You know, she would, uh, instead of using tongs and things like that, and I wonder if that's because when they were growing up, if she just didn't have those tools. So I always wonder why mom did so much with a fork as opposed to the way we do nowadays. See how nice and soft that batter is? Beautiful batter. So I'm just using, doing a little bit of mom, doing a little Curtis. Let that oil get nice and hot, about 350, 360. We'll keep it there. And remember, the more you, more um, chicken you put in the pan, the lower the temperature will get. So give it a second or two before adding the next piece so we can see it still frying. I'm actually frying these in canola oil when we make the, um, when we make our sweet and sour in the pan, I will use uh, peanut oil. So I'm gonna fry up all this chicken. We'll come back and then we will, uh, yeah, go to work. Fresh and Sweet, a new segment on the show that I'm going to feature an item that's in the markets in its in season. Today is the Tuscan Melon. It's a member of that cantaloupe family, one of the older members, and this comes from the northern region of Italy. has a beautiful, sweet orange uh, flesh. The ridges on the uh, Tuscan Melon are a little deeper than those on a cantaloupe. It's almost like it's saying, cut me along these ridges. Everyone gets a slice. Beautiful orange flesh, as I said. Sometimes though, when you cut a melon from north to south, the seeds run out like that and it bruises the flesh. No big deal though, it won't affect the flavor. This melon, in addition to that beautiful color, has a nice, sweet, tangy flavor. 
Great with a glass of champagne at brunch, huh? Give it a try, okay? Tuscan style cantaloupe. Try it out. Let's get back to the kitchen and finish up that sweet and sour chicken recipe. Today, I want to walk with you. I've got a little peanut oil in the pan. And um, again, there are no allergies, peanut, no nut allergies in our house. Lisa and I both are, are fine with nuts. We're going to um, do our vegetables first. I've got the onions, peppers, and then the pineapple. I love that. And one of the things I want to stress, like cooking with a wok, is something I haven't done that much of. However, you know, as a, as a teacher, as a student, you know, learning is lifelong. So as even as a chef, I'm constantly trying to, I want to learn more. So to cook with a wok is something I'm, I'm working on. So the onions, I'll let them cook for just a bit. And again, one of my favorite ways of regulating heat is to raise the vessel, in this case, the wok, above the heat. It kind of lowers the heat just that quickly. Okay, look at those onions, isn't that gorgeous? Now, um, then I'm gonna add my peppers next, green, red, and yellow. And we're not gonna overcook them. Maybe a minute or two. Mmm, smells so good. I only used half an onion. I probably could have used that whole onion. Isn't that great? I know, oh, color's just beautiful. Now, a lot of chefs, a lot of cooks, will remove the, the peppers and onions from the pan when they make their sweet and sour. I like to do it all right here in the pan. So I've got my ingredients compiled for my sweet and sour to my left. The um, tomato paste, the brown sugar, the, the red um, uh, jam, the raspberry jam, the vinegar, water, and a little slurry, a lot slurry, <laughs> um, along with our um, beautiful vegetables here. Okay, let's add our pineapples next. Put the pineapples back there, just add them right in with that juice. Isn't that pretty? Oh. I have three woks in my house. I've got two that I like to use with the induction heat tops. This one I use on this cooktop. And I've got two rings that I put over the burner to help hold the wok in place so it'll sit there. You can find those on Amazon or at uh, any kitchen cook store in your town. Now, what I'm going to try to do here is just push some up the sides so that we can make a well in the middle. Let's start to make our sweet and sour sauce right in the middle here. Let's add our tomato paste. A raspberry or your favorite berry jam. Right there. I'm going to get all of that in there. Some water next. And I'm going to take and mix it in right now, just a little bit. I've got, I switched to a spatula, uh, a silicone spoon as well. Let's add our brown sugar now. Brown sugar in there. And lower my temperature just ever so slightly. Look at that color starting to change already. And I'm keeping it right in the bottom of the wok. Let's add our vinegar. dash or two of salt and again I'm using peanut oil I use peanut oil to cook the veggies or you could use soy sauce there and what we've got here is that little cornstarch water slurry and the reason we make the slurry slurry <laughs> is so that it won't uh, clump up when you pour it in okay and just add a bit at a time One of the beauties of cooking things at home is that you know what goes in your food. You control what's in there, right? Now we're going to start adding our chicken right back to our wok. We'll let that sauce thicken up. Now once we add that, um, once we add the um, chicken in there, you'll notice it starts to 
thicken that that cornstarch helps to thicken that little slurry. Mm. Can always add a little more. It's not thick enough for you. Now let's reach across for our chicken. I want to pull everything down in there. Oh, it smells so good in my house this day. Wow. Reach across there. I'll just start adding that, that chicken. And if the pieces are too large, just go ahead and cut them up. And all I want to do is allow this to reheat the chicken if it has sat and cooled a bit, okay? Slide it in there. Again, if the pieces are too large, just break them down, okay? Get everything coated in that soy and that sweet and sour sauce. Mmm, does that look good, huh? Do you think Martin Yan would be proud of me today? Thank you, Martin, for all the advice you've given me over the years. Thank you, Ming, all my buddies. Thank you guys so much. Emerald, Michael LaMonaco, all these were chefs in the early days of the Food Network. We had some fun. Wow. Sarah Moulton, Debbie Fields. Mm. Debbie Fields, Mrs. Fields Cookies. She, was, she is such a sweetheart. All right, this is good. We can come back and serve it up. Look how the sauce is just coated up. I'm going to turn the wok off, and I still have some chicken left over. I can make chicken sandwiches. Ooh la la. Hey, it's me, Curtis. Welcome to my kitchen. I've got a tomato soup for you tonight. It's so easy. There's just a few ingredients. Let's get to work. This soup is absolutely fabulous. It's just three ingredients and seasoning. I've got an onion, butter, and tomatoes. Now these are my gorgeous tomatoes from the summer that I've just simply froze. Um, washed and frozen in a plastic bag. I've allowed them to thaw out today. They're gonna make our tomato soup. And then pepper, salt, of course I'm gonna grind those up, and then oregano. That's all the seasoning you will need. I'm going to slice my onion. The most difficult part of the soup may be just the uh, pep of the onions. Because what we're going to do now is add our butter and allow it to melt. Pan. Now this is an ode to my mother, who we lost a few months ago. Mama, I love you so much. She would always take a paring knife, and the way she would slice butter into a pan, it just you know, I don't know, I'm about to cry just thinking about her, those beautiful things she did. And as a kid growing up, I didn't even, you know, didn't give it a second thought. Now, whenever I cook, I think about the way mom would do it. And this is one of those little loving moments of hers. And I, now, there's some safety in this. I don't want you doing this at home, um, kids especially. See how I kind of break it off before I put it in there, just so I don't cut my hand. Also, um, you can feel towards get to the bottom of that. We're just going to place all this butter in the bottom there and let it allow it to melt. Um, and we're going to cook our uh, onions. My mother was so good with a paring knife. And years later, I was doing a show with Jacques Papin in um, Honolulu. We were doing this thing where the 
Um, main My mama, everyone. I love you to so much, Largo. Um, mainland chefs were competing against the, the island chefs. <laughs> and of course, Jacques, we elected as our captain. And one of the questions I want to pose to Jacques was, on a desert island, if you had to have one utensil, what would it be? And he said, a paring knife. And I just thought about that as I was sharing with you my, my mom's story of how she loved working with a paring knife. Okay, so you see how the butter is melting, the pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna lower the temperature on this just ever so slightly. And if you notice when I was slicing the onions, I, I just tried to keep them uniform. And I'm gonna break all those rings. I cut it in half. I'm just gonna put them all in there. And I want you to let you take your time here and just cook these onions thoroughly. You know, 15, 20 minutes, that's okay. We really want the onions to cook down because this is gonna be the, uh, the huge part of the flavor to our soup, the butter and onion. And when we caramelize these onions, we're bringing out all that sweetness. So we'll come back when these have cooked a little longer. I'm not sure if you can hear the onions cooking over there. While they are, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Now, as I said earlier, these are tomatoes from this summer. And I've allowed them to thaw out this afternoon. And this is one of the beautiful things about frozen tomatoes. You see all that beautiful tomato nectar. This is a quick way of peeling tomatoes. You see that? After they've frozen, you can just pull, pull those skins right off like little zippers. Look at that. I'll take all those off before we make our tomato soup, before we add them to the pot. And let me clean this mess up while we are cooking our onions. Wow, those onions, oh, they smell so good. If they only had smell -a vision I think I'll send Tim Cook a letter and say, hey, Tim, I love my Apple phone, my watch, my iPad, because I record all my stuff on it. Can we create smell-o-vision? <laughs> hey, well, yeah, Curtis, right. <laughs> okay, so now look how the onions, I've let them cook down. Absolutely gorgeous. And if you're not worried about your weight, go ahead and add a little more butter in there. That's fine. However, if you're like me, one stick should do it, okay? Now, we are ready for our tomatoes. And again, I'm trying not to make a mess in the house. Those of you are, that are have been watching the um, national championship, you see it's a great game tonight. 14-21, Alabama's up right now. Now look at those tomatoes. I've gone ahead and removed as many of the uh, skins as I could. We want all that nice juice from the tomatoes in there. And I'm going to just simply pour those in. And don't worry if there's still some uh, tomato skins left. Remember, it's a good source of fiber. You can also just take them out. We're going to let this cook, bring this to a boil, boil, then I'm going to lower it and simmer it for about 25 to 30 minutes. So this is great. Now, when it's done, you can either puree it or just serve it chunky style. Isn't that beautiful? Let's burn, raise this heat just a bit. And we're not going to add any seasoning until it's done. Well, I'm going to add the oregano. I take that back. I'm going to add the oregano, and then I'll check for salt and pepper uh, before serving. And I've got about mm, a tablespoon of dry oregano. Summertime, of course, I'll be using my fresh oregano from the garden. I look forward to uh, showing you all the new garden that we... Uh, going to have this summer. Lisa and I, we've spent the winter, whew, what a winter it's been, uh, with work in the house and work in the garden. We'll come back in a few minutes after this is cooked down. We'll give it our first taste test or test for taste. Peace. Okay, I've lowered the soup and I'm allowed to simmer looking really nice. Um, we'll give it a taste for test. Should I say taste for test? Yeah, test for taste. Wow, the soup is just absolutely beautiful. 
I'm going to serve it up because that national championship game is getting really good. Touchdowns all over the place. And I want to go watch it. I think Lisa's getting hungry. Isn't that beautiful? I did not puree this up. You could, if you want, just go ahead and puree it. However, tonight I think I want to feature those onions, those beautiful caramelized onions in there. And the um, only thing left now to do is to uh, take a big taste. Ooh, soup is ready. It's a winter's night. National Championship's going. Oh, it smells so good. Salt and pepper to taste. And what we mean by that is you taste it. Mmm. If it needs more salt and pepper, go ahead and add it. This seems to be perfect, though. So the grilled cheese, I got to whip that up. Call Lisa. She's in the back watching PBS. And uh, we're going to have some tomato soup, tomato basil soup. In the summertime, I'd add a little more basil. So it's a nice, pretty tomato and oregano soup. It's absolutely fabulous. Mmm. Bon appetit. Mmm. That's so good. The work is done. I love it when I hear from viewers and they ask me about recipes or cooking, those kind of things. One of the things that I love is that someone asked me about the stuff that's on the fridge, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to answer that question. These two little guys are the lucky cats. You now, uh, Lisa, my sweetheart, worked and lived in China a long time, and she tells me the lucky cats, you'll find them in all Chinese restaurants because they bring luck and prosperity to the, uh, to the, to the business. So moms, dads, whoever's taking the kids out, play a game to see if you can find the lucky cats in uh, the next time you're at a Chinese restaurant. My lucky cats are always behind us. Something else in the house, we have the kissing cups. Someone asked about the kissing cups. I'm not sure exactly where she found these. However, I, I love them, these kissing cups. <laughs> you know, simple of spreading that love, right? Uh, this, for those of you who know New York, back in the day, before Starbucks and Pete's were all over the place. You go into a New York place to get a cup of coffee, right? It, it came in a cup just like this. Now this is a porcelain one and I've never used it. Um, but hey, thanks Lisa for bringing this out, okay? Last thing that's behind me are Paris cups. We picked those up a couple years ago and we're in Paris. Paris is one of my favorite cities in the world. I think I've been recorded saying that Paris is my favorite city. San Francisco's number two, so I live here. Sydney's number three. Had a chance to spend a lot of time down in Sydney. Oh, and also up top, there's a couple of more of my walks. I think earlier I mentioned that I have three walks. You tired of hearing me talk about that stuff? Let's see what the um, sweet and sour tastes like. Now, I gotta be honest, when I serve this up, we're gonna serve it up with rice, um, except I didn't have time today. We're gonna zip out to Bodega to beat the heat this weekend. Mm. Those sweet peppers, yellow peppers are gorgeous with that sweet and sour sauce. Let's try the chicken and the pineapple. I can't wait to bite into the pineapple. This is such a good dish. Mmm. Wow. Look at that pineapple. Mmm. Hope you enjoyed this episode of our show. If there's something you want to learn, let me know. Please share your, share your love with me like I want to try to share mine with you. All right, everybody. Peace. Spread love. Sweetheart, it's done.